Let's take a closer look at identity and access to Enter ID and why proving your identity is going to be so important. Well, first off, we need to be concerned about non-repudiation of access. It means you are who you say you are and no one can say otherwise. So Enter ID as it lets you in to access any resources such as email through Microsoft 365 or storage through Azure, it knows that you are who you say you are when you logged in. And that means a combination of possibly your username, your password, or any one of many multi-factor authentication options. And it keeps out unintended users. You don't want people who are not only hackers, but you don't want people accidentally logging in either because they could be having access, of course, to sensitive information. And it allows for single sign-on. So the way this works is that if you have on-premises Active Directory and you're synchronizing your Active Directory with Enter ID, or you are not synchronizing, but you have registered your computer, which I'll show you here upcoming shortly. You've registered your computer with Entra ID. Then you'll have what's called single sign-on. So that means you'll be able to sign on to your local Active Directory, open up applications that are in Microsoft 365, and that's where all the you know big applications are located. Then when you open that up, you won't be prompted for a username and password because it's going to pass credentials off to enter ID to allow you to access those applications. Also, you may want to consider passwordless options. You don't have to have a password when you log in. If you want, you can just use another factor, such as your fingerprint or your face ID with Windows Hello or some other device uh, to, such as YubiKey to let you enter in to enter ID. So single sign-on, and once again, that allows users to sign in once and then have access to all the different locations. So when you sign in to Enter ID, you have access to all the different applications that are available to you, not only in Microsoft 365, but if you use any of the other authentication options that I mentioned previously, then you can use those to access any applications as well without having to sign in again. You have access to multiple applications. This also works with certain websites that will work with Enter ID. They have to be Enter ID certified to use those different protocols. And if they use them, then great, you'll have access to it. So Microsoft 365 applications and third party. Microsoft 365, of course, is native. So that's going to work with single sign-on right away. Third party is only, only going to work if they work with Microsoft 365 and Enter ID for authentication. One of the best security options that you have for multi-factor authentication is using the MS Authenticator app. So this is an application that you would install from your uh, your phone, whether it's an Android or an iPhone, and then you can use it every time you log in. It's going to prompt you to type in a number to uh, put enter, and it has to match the number that you're seeing on the screen, and then it will allow you in. One question you should be asking yourself is, what is an identity? An identity it could be multiple different things. It, first off, it can be a user. Of course, users is going to be the biggest part of any type of identity, logging into a computer, logging into Active Directory, logging into Enter ID. A user is an identity, but it's not just a user that's considered an identity. Another identity could be a group. So this is multiple users, and you could be using your group identity to log in that's separate from your user identity, but your user is part of that group group. And the reason for that is because as a group, you may want to all use the same sign-in. So as people enter and leave the group, you don't have to change the sign-in to that particular resource. It's still going to be the same group email address and password or whatever multi-factor you have set up. And then as the people come and go, you just add them or remove them from the group, but keep the same sign-in. Computers are also an identity, which I'll show you here shortly. Computers need an identity. They need to use the username and password or multi-factor authentication options in order to authenticate the computer. But then once that authentication and registration happens, then that is now considered an identity to be trusted. And you have access to applications. So the identity to access applications sometimes is going to be uh, from third party, as I mentioned before. And as long as they authenticate into Enter ID, then you won't have to worry about adding in additional credentials. 
Let's take a look at a Windows 11 computer and single sign-on. I'm in a Windows 11 computer, and I'm going to start by going to my Start button, and I'm going to click on Settings. And then I'm going to go over to the Search and type in Work. And I'm going to type in Work or School and choose Access Work or School. Now take a look that I've already gone ahead and registered my account with the admin at linkedinvideos.onmicrosoft.com. But I'm also a member of this Active Directory domain as well. So you can be a member of your on-premises domain as well as an Enter ID tenant at the same time. And you do that simply by clicking on Connect, and then it prompts you for your username and password, and then your computer is registered. Now, I've already gone ahead and done this just because the registration does take some time to take effect. But once it's done, you can see that it is now registered. So if I go into my Enter ID website, which I have right here, here's my website. I'm going to click on Devices. And when I click on Devices, you can see a couple of different devices in here. I'm going to click on Total Number of Devices. And then we should see my Client 01, and there it is, my Client 01 computer. And like I said, once you add this in, it does usually take about 10 to 30 minutes before you're going to see it show up. So this computer is now considered an identity. And here you can see I can go to the local administrator password recovery. So in case for some reason I have lost my local administrator password, then I can choose to recover it here. You need to have set up local administrator password service or LAPS before that will work. That's something you can set up ahead of time. You can also go into BitLocker keys. So if you've encrypted your hard drive of your Windows 10 or 11 computer, then you can go ahead and recover the keys if you've set that up with BitLocker as well. Here are the roles and administrators. You can add people who can manage this particular device if you'd like. I'm going to go back up a couple of levels. And here you can see Intune. Now, besides just getting a license for this user, which allowed me to add my device, I've also added in a license for Intune. So when I open up Intune, I can make additional changes to this computer. So I'll click on Devices, just like I did in Enter ID. And it sees my Windows device. So I'll click on the Windows device. And you can see that my device is compliant. Now, if I'd like to, I can do things like run updates, automatic updates, run various different policies on the computer. I can add applications where it automatically forces installation or just gives the user an option to install an application. I can do total coverage of managing this computer, even more so than through Active Directory. And let's say that your computer has somehow been stolen. Well, all I got to do is click the wipe button and it will wipe that button as soon as it goes out to the internet. So if any hackers try to log in, maybe they use an ethernet cable. As soon as it reaches the internet, it'll start wiping the computer. Or if they log in with a local account by resetting a local password, that's okay. It'll wipe it there as well. And if you decide you would like to retire the computer so it gets removed from this uh, particular site, from Intune as well as from Enter ID, you can do that as well. You don't have to use Intune, but you certainly can to have a lot of extra control over your computer. Let's also go into email. And then I'll open up my email through Outlook as well. So I'll put in outlook.office.com. And it logs me in without having to use my password because I've already logged in using the Portal Azure site using the same user. But now what I want to do is I want to open up Outlook itself. So instead of using just the web version, I want to use the application of Outlook. So it automatically found my user because I've logged into the website and it's using single sign-on. And I'll click Continue. Now it's setting things up without prompting me for a password. Here you can see that Outlook supports Microsoft 365 school and work accounts. It's gone ahead and passed by that really quickly, but it automatically used that information that the computer's been registered to go ahead and log in without the need for the additional authentication. 
And here is Outlook with showing all my emails from Outlook, including if I have any calendar items or any other items under contacts or tasks. The user doesn't need to be an administrator to use single sign-on. They just need to have an Active Directory account and or a user account and license in Entra ID.